2010, the birth of the Funko Pop figure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, you walk through this office. We work in kind of a, a happy, bright, shiny toy land. Right. You, yeah. you step out of the studio and into the office where our desks are, and I would hazard that you could count 50 Funko Pop uh, figurines oh, you in can, that room. You can He's count on. 40 on one desk. Okay, right. whose desk is that? Eugene. You, we Eugene have a guy working yeah. for yeah. Eugene <laughs> Rivers who has, who has dozens of Funko Pops in his desk. Also, our old, um, old editor-in-chief here, uh, Hillary Goldstein, had Funko Pops. All I didn't over know stuff. that. Oh, yeah. So once upon a time, we did not have cute little chibi-style vinyl figures on mm -hmm. our desk for absolutely every pop culture obsession, niche, and fetish yeah. you could possibly have in the universe. I went to Funko Pops website getting ready for this. There are 72 pages of figures wow. available right now, and that's that's full grid square. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got to be over a thousand of them. Now, Just, fun Funko Pops are interesting because they fall in that place between sort of higher end desk statues yeah. and uh, cheap toys, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And they find, it's like, they're like, what, like 12 bucks sometimes, yeah, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. But finally, an, a really great entry point yeah. to having a unified look to your toys, yes. mm -hmm. but also accessible because they are cheap. They're cheap, and, yeah. and, and they're small. You can yeah. buy you can buy a ton of them. Uh, they even just launched a, a new line that's even smaller. Yeah, I have yeah. some but, of those, actually. Yeah, and they're really cool. <laughs> like, as, a, as like a 80s and 90s pop culture sponge, mm -hmm. um, it was like, there were certain things like you would just never get toys for, you know, Back to the Future. You would never get yeah. toys for like the Goonies or like even like deep cut Star Wars characters. You'd get them, but Funko made it so you could be like, hey, I really want like, I want a Walter White. <laughs> but I don't want him killing anyone or doing anything Yeah, and, and they find a way to make that wonderful. It, it's kind of indicative of the yeah. mainstreaming of, of geek culture I into our lives. It's occurred over, I don't know, it's been going on since I was born. The, ner and, the nerds have been winning. Yeah, The Triumph like, yeah. of the Nerds, I Absolutely. think, was the name of the documentary that first started to document yeah. it. It, it just... It has become a part of everyday life. Underneath this dress shirt, I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I could yeah. probably get away with that at the New York Times as well as I could here mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. That's what's changed in our lifetimes. These toys kind of embody that. Yeah, uh, like it's it, something, um, talking about like the optimism portion, yeah. like um, it's not that it was such a big gamble for Funko to actually do this, but they weren't really known for doing anything other than maybe bobbleheads or like yeah. people were just used mm -hmm. to bobbleheads. So in 2008, the CEO, um, just took the toys, like, like um, fake, you know, just prototypes, whatever, took it to Comic-Con, and not a lot of people were interested because they are like, this is weird, it's not a bobblehead, what yeah. am I looking at? But yeah. enough women and enough Comic-Con goers were like, hey, this actually is really cute, I'd probably buy more of them, and so he took a gamble of like, I'll use my Star Wars, my DC, and my Marvel licenses that I have, do a little bit of them and see how they go, and it just exploded, because yeah. it's like a collectible, like you said, like, yep. they're accessible, so, and you, don't, you can just get as many as you want, and they're cheap, and so it fo just... Follow-up anecdote to that, I worked Comic-Con last year in 2015, I was shooting a video on the show floor for IGN, and the Funko booth, like, pulled this wall down, and this guy announced, uh, the Funko booth is now open, and I almost got trampled. <laughs> like, oh, thousands geez. of people running. And I think it's, like, it's, it's kind of fascinating to have a toy that you know, unless you are, something is just deviously wrong with your brain, <laughs> that you will never have all of them. Like, yeah. Amiibo, you can collect them all. Nendoroids, you can even be like, okay, they've only made a certain amount of these things. Uh, you will never have every every Funko. Unless you just, you're the CEO of Funko. Unless you're the CEO. <laughs> but you need you need like a you need a warehouse for that. Right. You need yeah, the absolutely. Funko room. Yeah. You need the, the, the Funko layer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we're